China's amazing rise to superpower status. Never in history has a poor third world country risen to superpower status with respect to wealth, manufacturing, exports, a rising standard of living, expansion of infrastructure, military prowess, and financial power as fast as China has over the past 15 to 20 years. Wall Street's paid, played a significant part in that. We finance most of the building out of infrastructure in China. A lot of that infrastructure is U.S. companies that are now manufacturing overseas. The benefit to those companies is higher profitability, which rewards your 401k, your stock portfolio. And so we, we, have, to, we have to keep in perspective that we have participated in, in this transition. Within 10 to 15 years, China will pass the U.S. in many respects, including militarily. Within 10 to 20 years, we may have, they may have the world's reserve currency. The yuan, if, and certainly it would be if it was backed by gold. China's great advantage, as Don, Don mentioned earlier, is 25 cent to $1 an hour wages versus 15 to $30 per hour in America. We met with a client in California who had recently had a zipper factory in Mexico. Uh, the cost of manufacturing those zippers was $1.15 an hour. Within 45 minutes, the factory was closed. He left the factory via helicopter, never to return to Mexico. And within 24 hours, the factory was up and running in China, manufacturing zippers at 56 cents an hour. That's highly profitable to his, his business. China's economic explosion is unprecedented. They use roughly 25% of the world's steel, 40% of the world's concrete. They signed contracts with the Chilean government for 25 years worth of copper production, 50% of that country's copper. 25 years worth of future contracts. These folks are thinking ahead. It's absolutely brilliant. They are, and part of that is because they are the world's largest consumer of copper. China has 160 cities with populations over a million. We have nine, but an 18 times differential. China has 220 million surplus workers in its central and western regions. Our total workforce is about 140 million. China has more speakers of English as a second language than America does a first language. We learned this morning that there are more millionaires in China than America, uh, which I did not know. China is the world's second largest consumer of oil. As they continue to expand, whether it's uranium that's needed for nuclear energy or any commodity under the sun, we see a tremendous explosion in commodity prices. Uranium from seven to eight dollars up over ninety. The CRB index is, is, is over twice its value in the last five to six years. Things as mundane as lead and nickel and tin are reaching record highs, 20-year highs, and this in large part is because, because of Chinese cons consumption. By 2025, China will use 25 million barrels of oil per day, equal to our current consumption. China is trying, uh, trying to line up long-term oil contracts with Iran, Venezuela, Nigeria, and Russia. You can't travel around the world without running into uh, Chinese businessmen. They are thinking with a 25, 50, and 100-year time frame in mind while we're worried about the next election. They're planning and lining up the resources that they need for massive expansion, and it, and it truly is a brilliant chess game they're playing. China's dilemma currently is what to do with a trillion dollars in foreign currency reserves. 